Let's get it, people. It's your boy Frenchy, and I'm here with singer songwriter extraordinaire. That's right, Eric Bellinger. That's right. Trying to find out what the hell are you doing on the East Coast? I'm over here. Got a show tonight. Uh -huh. Sobs, man, super excited. A lot of people been hitting me talking about they gonna come out. I didn't know what it was gonna look like. If it was in LA and I did the show, I know uh -huh. what would happen. But in New York, you know, I'm I'm just surprised that so many people have been hitting me like, yo, can I come through? I'm like, yeah, you can come through. So, I, I mean, you hot on these streets, man. Yeah. Like things like this. Like, when you have a live show, people come yeah. out. That's when you really know. Exactly. Like, Twitter's one thing. Exactly. You could buy followers. You could buy Instagram followers. Right. But when right. the show comes down, you know, this is what it is. Exactly. Um, so you're from Compton. Yes, sir. Right? Uh, question for you. Okay. I've never been there. And I probably don't want to go there based on what the story is. What What is Compton like? Is it exactly what, you know, the news yeah. makes it seem like? Yeah, it's pretty bad, you know. Um... Um, luckily my parents, you know, they was kind of on me at an early age, like we grew up there, but I didn't go to school there. You know, every day I would commute to and from school, driving 45 minutes in traffic, 8 o'clock on the freeway, and driving back home from practice, football practice, 45 minutes, um, you know, from, you know, right around the time people get out of work, right at like 5 o'clock. So, you know, I would, I would go to school and people had no idea that I go home and I'm literally juggling drive by wow. you know getting banged on you know on my own block you know all that all that type of stuff is real you know um right now i moved thank god i'm out in the valley mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta commute <laughs> to the valley or like somewhere in the, in the hills or something but i'm out there no more sirens you know what i mean but it, it was crazy because you know i i had a good head on my shoulders from from the school that i went to and I still had the street, you know, because when I would get home, it got real at mm -hmm. night, you know. So it was dope, you know. I'm thankful for parents that really knew what time it was and wanted to, you know, you know, raise a son like that really could, you know, translate in both worlds. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Um, so congratulations once again on your BMI award. Thank you. And uh, I know Kiss Goodnight just like I think recently hit like in a million, more than a million views yeah, yeah, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, man. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, what's next? What what what, is, what are you working on? I know yeah. you're always working. What's 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 coming yeah, up? Yeah. So I'm still writing. You know, I'm 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 a, I'm the guy that's like, yo, I gotta do what I did to get here. I gotta continue to do that so I stay there. You know. So mm -hmm. I'm still writing. I'm still you know on Chris Brown's album, his next album. I have five songs on Chris Brown's next album. Trey songs. I did three songs on there. And in the meantime, I'm working on Eric Ballinger, the artist, working nice. on my brand. Um, I got a mixtape coming out um, October 1st. It's called Choose Up Season. Okay. Letting people know what time it is. In LA, the single life, you know, that is that price. That is the entire single life in one project. Mm -hmm. From number one to number nine, every song is connected. You start off with a song called Choose Up. You move on uh, to the next record called Valet. So you choose up from the club, boom, you get the valet, you head to the house. Line number down. three is called House Party. I'm gonna look in y'all face. So number three is called House Party. <laughs> number four is called Night Bag. So some women have this bag in their trunk and they keep it there. It's called a night bag because you never know if you're gonna need to stay over and you're gonna have an extra set of whatever you need in the morning so then um, after night bag joint caught the pillow the pillow you know you you in the bed you turned around you're facing the pillow and you gotta listen to that so that's called the pillow after the pillows joint called night owls um you up all night night owls song after that is called never be together because right around that time is when they start catching feelings and forgetting about the agreement <laughs> you know in the beginning of the whole situation so after never be together is a song called casual it's like reminding her like yo it was supposed to be casual and the last song is called awkward because now everything is just awkward. this is an entire lifestyle album you pretty much just went through my entire like friday night and like you one see, exact I'm, album i'm telling you man <laughs> How do you decide um, when you're writing, when yeah. um, they're in the writing process, how much of your heart to open up and actually put into the music? Or is there just no boundaries at all? Um, all well, about? when I'm writing songs for other people, I, I don't really write about my stories. Like I, I try to figure out like, you know, I ask them questions. Like, what are you going through right now? Where are you at in your life? And yeah. to where, because that helps as well because they're connected to the song. You know, when I write a song that's completely talking about Usher and everything he's been through, he's going to love it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's not until I'm writing for myself that I pour out everything that I, anything that I go through um, from my relationships or, you know, people around me. It's like, 
okay, that's when I go crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. otherwise, it's like you keep giving, you can't give your best material. You can't. You know what yep. I mean? It's like if you keep giving it away, then they're going to keep being the best. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to be the guy who, you know, wish he had a shot. But for me, I'm like, nah, like you're going to hear their project and it's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. And then when you hear my project, it's going to be crazy. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, songwriters are so grateful. Um, for just being on an album and they settle like, man, I'm just happy, like, thank yeah. you for taking the song. But I, but now to the point, I'm like, nah, there's a calling on my life, you know what I mean? I'm, it's, I'm supposed to be a messenger. I'm supposed to tell a story. I'm supposed to stand in the gap and be an example for the generation. You know, God made me in a way that, you know, of course, like, this is your talent and, mm -hmm. and use that for this, for this purpose. But I gave you a voice as well. You know, so I look at it like y'all can get these songs, but these right here, I, I don't even play these songs yeah. for certain people. I just be like, nah, y'all can't have it because. And, 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 and then he drops them on the world, and everybody goes crazy, it man. Goes crazy, um, it's, it's just dope, man. I can't wait to hear this uh, choose up, choose up, choose season up season project. So you know, you know, you're definitely uh, making a wave and making noise out here because, of course, once you start getting hot, then controversy comes around and finds you. Exactly. So uh, I was reading the other day, and I just want you to clarify this. Just you know, that's the, the best way to get you know yeah. rumors out the way and all this yeah. stuff. Um, Paulo the Don, another uh, major producer, told yeah. the publication that he knows nothing about you uh, working on Nicki's Anaconda. Right. Um. Could you clarify that? Yeah, um, so I'll just lay it all out really because, you know what I mean, Polo started, did the beat mm -hmm. um, with Nicki. I wasn't involved, the interns weren't involved. Mm -hmm. um, Nicki said, I like this idea, it just needs, you know, a little more love, a little more TLC, somebody needs somebody to bring it home. So um, she called on the interns, mm -hmm. the interns called me. Okay. So me and the interns were in with Nikki, working on a, the joint in LA, and Polo never, you know, he was never there. So yeah. it's completely understandable. I didn't take any offense with him saying, I don't know what these because he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the interns, we worked on a joint together. Um, as far as on the production side, none of the lyrics, you know, Nikki did all the lyrics. Um, but when it came down to the actual, um, promotion and me um, speaking up. But really what happened is I spoke up on the record first. Okay. They asked me some questions in an interview while I was um, trying to promote Kiss Good Night mm -hmm. um, with Kid Ink and they were like yo so what's their involvement with the new Nicki record? So I kept the questions at a minimum um, the answers I mean at a minimum and was just like yo just turn up, turn up, just turn up you know. Yeah. I really That's really all I said but for her it's like this is my record I need to speak up on it first, you know? And I, that's completely understandable because I'm an artist and I know that when I got a single, I want to roll it out the way I want to roll it out. You know, I don't want nobody necessarily speaking up on me and telling me, you know, telling the public what my record is before I tell them. Gotcha. You know what I mean? But um, I'm the type of person, like I wouldn't get, you know, she was upset, you know? Like I understand her being upset, but to say he had nothing to do with the record is like, she went way too far with mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? She was. It wasn't like she just pulled me to the side and checked me like, "Yo, E, listen, this was, is this was is the way it should have been." Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? She she could have did that. We could have been cool, but everybody's different, you know. So she wanted to take the route and say he had nothing to do with this song. And it was like, really? So now, does that mess up your relationship? Because I know, um, aside from Anaconda, you also love more on Chris' album. Yeah. See, that was the song I wrote for Chris. Mm -hmm. You know, and she hopped on that. And this was before, way before this happened. Because this really just happened like a month ago. You know, like right before she put it out. When we were in the studio, she told us like this is the next single. You know, she she already knew. And um, you know, I just look at it like. If the relationship is salty, I know that it's not because it's my fault. You know, like I made a, not even a mistake. Like I just spoke up on it when they was asking me some questions. You know, next time I'll know, like to maybe if it's not my record, just be like, no comment, no comment, no comment. But for her to say, yo, he had nothing to do with the record, and it's just like, okay, now you're going a little bit too far. You know, but as far as the credit, you know, and, and the publishing, that hasn't been finalized yet. So we'll mm -hmm. see, we'll see what happens with it, you know. Uh, I know you play football, big football fan. I used to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, who you rooting for, man? Who's taking it this season? Man, Niners, man. We were so close last season, man. We gonna we gonna do it again. We we gonna do it. This dude saying that in New York. What can I do? What up? You you. If I came to New York and switched up, then the homies would have something to say. So <laughs> if, you come, if you come to LA and all of a sudden talking about yeah, man, go Raiders. Your boys, your boys back home ain't gonna be rocking with you.